Hey there YouTube viewers, welcome to this week's video blog where I'm going to be talking about limbic system impairment and the role that it plays in making and keeping people chronically ill with complex and visible illnesses such as chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, multiple chemical sensitivity, mast cell activation syndrome, chronic Lyme and company, autoimmunity, and more. In this video, I will be answering four primary questions. What is limbic system impairment? Why care? How to recognize it? And what is required to heal from it? Hello, I'm Jennifer Ellis Schutz, and you're watching the Wellness Code Academy channel, where I chat about all things functional health, as well as mindset, wellness, the mind-body connection, neural rewiring, energy-based healing modalities, and personal development from both the layperson and the practitioner perspective. Be sure to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red subscribe button below this video and hit the bell to be notified next to it so that you don't miss a week's featured video. Okay, so what is limbic system impairment and how does it make and keep people chronically sick? Well, to answer this question, we must first know what the limbic system is and how it serves us. So the limbic system, which is located in the center of our brain in our temporal lobe, is our stress response system. It is what triggers our fight, flight, or freeze mechanisms. It's important to know and remember, however, that the limbic system and its role in initiating the stress response is not a bad thing. The primary intention of the limbic system is to save our life. It is vital to our survival that we are able to feel and act upon fear in true dangerous and or emergency situations so that we can take measures to protect ourselves and loved ones from harm or even quite possibly death. Without the ability to feel fear, we would not have the capability to say, rush out of the way of a car careening in our direction, jump out of the way of hot flames coming from a fire, or flee from and defend ourselves from an attacker. Fear is not inherently bad as long as it is activated and used appropriately. And when it is no longer needed or warranted, it needs to be released so that the system can return to a state of homeostasis or balance. In other words, the stress response is meant to be a short-term mechanism only. If the fear response does not end, however, the, the fight or flight center will remain active and the body will remain in a ready for action, hypervigilant state, which over time is extremely exhausting, catabolic, and unsustainable. When we bring activity to the limbic system, we are triggering hormonal changes in our body that will allow us to shift our physiology in a way that primes us to take action so that we can take measures to save our own lives. For instance, if we truly did need to run from or fight off an attacker, we would need our physiology to shift in a way that allows our heart to pump blood away from our organs into our arms and our legs, our breathing to speed up, our reflexes to quicken, our muscles to activate, and our vision and hearing to sharpen. The trouble comes in when the stress response is initiated in times when it is not warranted for purposes of self-preservation and is continuously activated over long periods of time. This is where limbic impairment, which is also known as limbic kindling or a limbic system trauma loop comes in. You see, the brain in general is very susceptible to injury from a wide array of insults such as, but not limited to, environmental toxins, head traumas, prolonged physical or psychological distress, drug side effects, poor lifestyle habits, sleep deprivation, pushing beyond one's limitations, and chronic infections with stealth microbes such as chronic Lyme and company. If the limbic system of the brain sustains an injury as a result of such influences, the stress response system can get stuck in on mode, leading to ultra hypersensitivity. This hypersensitivity then causes the brain to perceive most, if not all, environmental inputs as threats to one's survival. By environmental inputs, I'm referring to factors such as, but not limited to foods, everyday toxins that we all are exposed to as a part of everyday living, odors, nutritional supplements, experiences that trigger a traumatic memory of some kind, and the list goes on. In this scenario, the brain perceives everything as a threat, whether it is or is not, 
and send stress, stress signals to the body that trigger the release of stress hormones and pro-inflammatory immune cells to defend against the perceived threat. This in turn triggers mitochondria, the energy producers of the cells, to shift out of energy producing mode and into defense mode, which is also known as cell danger response mode. In cell danger response mode, all health promoting functions such as energy production, detoxification, higher level cognitive function, hormonal synthesis, neurotransmitter production, digestion, and more to slow way down or come to a grinding halt altogether. All of this drains cellular energy reserves and causes a person to feel brain fogged, fatigued, sick, and achy and prevents all biochemical based healing support such as supplements, pathogen eradication protocols, dietary changes, etc., from being as effective as they could be, if effective at all. Many times a person with severe limbic impairment going on will react adversely to even micro doses of supplements or any other intervention aimed at healing the physiology of the body. Basically, each new stimulus a person encounters is most often perceived as a threat by the injured limbic brain and thus triggers a fear-based psychological response such as anxiety or a physiological response such as pain or some other symptom. The physiological or psychological response then serves as a new limbic system trigger and around and around a person goes, caught in a very vicious feedback loop that spirals them deeper into the abyss of chronic illness. And now to answer the question of why care, which I presume may already be quite obvious to you by now, but if not, here are my thoughts about why care. If you are a person that has been struggling with chronic health challenges for a long time, and have had limited to no success with biochemical only based interventions such as running labs, taking supplements, and implementing various healing diets, this could very well be a key missing link to your puzzle. It surely was for me, but sadly it took me 16 plus years to learn about it and embrace it enough to make healing from it and rewiring my brain for wellness a focal point of my healing journey. Had I known about this much earlier on in my journey, I would have spared myself many years of suffering and saved many thousands of dollars that I spent on various treatment protocols that did not help me and many made me much worse. Furthermore, learning about limbic system impairment was a huge source of validation for me. After years of not responding well to many different protocols, doctors, friends, and family began suggesting that my ongoing health issues were likely solely psychological in nature. In other words, that all my struggles were in my head. While I knew deep down that this was not the case, hearing this over and over again, I started to doubt myself and ask myself, am I crazy? Am I nuts? It was utterly crazy making and produced a lot of self-doubt and loss of confidence. Understanding that I had an unhealed brain injury that was creating true physiological imbalances and real illness in my body was extremely validating and comforting, and not just from a not feeling crazy standpoint either, but also from the standpoint of feeling empowered that I could do something about it by taking measures to heal and rewire my brain for wellness, and that I wasn't truly stuck in long-term disability forever. And if you're a healthcare practitioner looking to improve client outcomes, if you have not already had patients or clients like this come your way, you will likely get them at some point. So whether you are a sufferer of chronic illness or a practitioner, it's critical to understand that amidst limbic system impairment, a person will not be able to return to a state of balance until the stress response is turned off and the brain is rewired for wellness. Until these two things happen, lab tests will likely continue to reveal biochemical imbalances no matter what interventions are implemented. This can often lead to years of running labs and taking loads of supplements only to remain stuck in a vicious stress pain illness cycle. The scenario is actually quite common for those with invisible chronic illnesses such as the ones that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. The good news is, is that the brain and nervous system are incredibly neuroplastic and therefore they can be rewired for wellness. Through learning and implementing tools for self-regulation and neural rewiring, one can heal from limbic impairment and rewire the brain and nervous system for wellness. One can shift from a protective phase to a growth phase. 
one where the body and brain and spirit for that matter can access its own innate healing abilities. Healing can then take place on all levels where there is impairment, physical, psychological, and emotional. I know this to be true because this is what I experienced in my own healing journey, which is a huge reason why I now do the work I do and why it's a focal point of this channel, as well as my Wellness Code Practitioner Certification Training Program called The Wellness Code, which you can learn more about in the information below this video. This said, the first step in rewiring the brain for wellness is recognizing limbic system impairment. And how does one recognize it? Well, there are many telltale signs to look for, but for the sake of keeping this video to a reasonable length, the eight most common signs to look for are as follows. Difficulty tolerating supplements or other healing interventions. Heightened sensitivity to sound, light, chemicals, food, and other environmental stimuli. Often finding it hard to make decisions about what is best for oneself. Excess of anxiety, fear, and impending doom that leads to worsening symptoms and avoidance behaviors. Continual focus on fear and symptoms to the point where illness and struggle become the basis of one's identity. Looping thoughts, easily overwhelmed by life's demands and prone to panic attacks. Coat hanger pain, which is chronic muscle tension throughout the upper back, the shoulders, and the neck. And lastly, often replays or preempt situations or interactions with others. Anyway, this brings me to the end of this video. If you'd like to learn more about how I overcame limbic system impairment and rewired my brain for wellness, check out last week's video entitled How I Rewired My Brain for Wellness. Coming up in next week's video, I will be taking a look at limbic system impairment in the broader context of cellular health and mitochondrial dysfunction. Thanks so much for watching and until next week, all my best to you.